Okay, so we've got a box of max mass two kilograms, and this box is actually being uh, pulled up, so it's moving, uh, and so it's going to be accelerating. So it's not in equilibrium in this case. So let's just indicate that it's accelerating up the plane, and then we've got all sorts of forces which are happening uh, that aren't labeled in our diagram, which we need to get labeled. So firstly, there's perpendicular to the plane at exactly 90 degrees. There's a reaction force. It's moving up the plane. Then there's going to be friction acting against the motion. And then vertically straight down is going to be the component of weight. And you can see that's the force, which is going to be a little bit annoying. So let's label all of these up. So it's accelerating up the plane. There's a reaction force, friction opposing motion. And then two kilograms, the mass of two kilograms means that uh, there is 2g, g 9.8, because of gravity acting vertically downwards. Now, this force here is the one, the component of weight, is the one that's actually being a little bit annoying, because it's not acting in the way that we want. So let's break it into components. Let's break it into components in the same direction as R, so perpendicular to the plane, and then parallel to the plane, which is the same direction as the 18 and friction, and we've got a little force triangle there. So let's glue that together. Let's pull this off the diagram, and then that was our force. So let's just add the component of weight back in, so it makes sense on the diagram. There. So what we have is we have a triangle which is 20 degrees, the right angle is down in this corner, the hypotenuse is the 2g which is the weight, and we need to break that into components. So the perpendicular to the plane is adjacent to the 20, so that's so ka, so it's 2g cosine 20, and then underneath we've got 2g sine 20 because that's the opposite. So that's the only force which is being a little bit annoying. Now let's get the two equations that we need. Now as it's being moved, first of all, um, we know that somewhere along the line we're going to have to have friction is going to be its maximum value which is going to be mu r and we're told that mu is 0 0.6 so we're going to need that in a second. Let's resolve not horizontally and vertically but let's resolve perpendicular to the plane. So R is acting in that direction, and the only thing that's acting against R is this component of the weight, which is minus 2g cos 20, and that's equal to zero because there's no motion in this way against the plane. The only motion is the way that the air is pointing, it's only accelerating or motion in this direction here, therefore, uh, this is equal to zero. This perpendicular to the plane is equal to zero no movement in that way. It's not bouncing off the plane or sliding through it. It's only sliding up and down. it. So that's our first equation. And then if we do the second equation, if we resolve in the direction of motion, it makes our life easier, then we're going to be using uh, Newton's second law, which is total force or resultant force is mass times acceleration. So the total force is, well, 18 is acting up the plane. Against the plane, we've got friction and also against the plane we've got 2g sine 20. Now so that's the resultant force and that is now equal to well it's the mass which is 2 multiplied by the acceleration which is a. So we can rewrite this equation so we can rewrite it 18 minus mu r and we know that mu is 0 0.6 or 3 fifths minus 2g sine 20 is equal to 2 lots of acceleration. Let's call this equation 2. You have to watch the second part of the video to see how I solve it, but this bit was just about to set these equations up, which are worth the marks. Now, this first one's got one unknown in, so we can solve that one to get r. And once we've found that, we can substitute the value of r into this equation. We know mu, we know r, we can then calculate a. So that's what I'm going to do in the next bit of this video. Okay?